Hello everyone! Welcome to Illustral Plants. My name is Crystal Cedar and today we are going to be doing a spiritual elemental witchy pagan plan with me in my custom classic and mini happy planner using the 2022 We Moon date book for the week of February 7th through February 13th. Things are ramping up now that we have safely moved into the year of the black water tiger for a lot of energy work practitioners this is a very crucial time in the year because it lets us know like what the elemental energies will be uh, that we'll need to kind of focus on to balance and then also to for those that practice um, if you're working with clients it's going to be important to know how to apply those elemental energies to them in their everyday life because it's the year of the blackwater tiger water is a very emotional element it's very deep diving it's also to kind of like a culmination of the past two years people are like fed up they're like done um, and they're actually pushing themselves to do the kind of self-care that they should have been doing even pre-pandemic but now they see like how vital it really is to have those really good self-care routines or at least learn about the resources that are available to start that journey of real legit shadow looking self-care <laughs> So we're going to get right into the weekly plan with me on page 48 and 49 of the Wee Moon Date Book. I'm going to be taking these out. And then I'm also going to be taking out my mini planner worksheet. This is where I'm going to be writing down all of the astrological symbol translations and then also do doing the elemental summary box right there. And then the translation page which is located in the back of the Wee Moon Date Book on page 203. If you have a spiral or a book bound, um, or if you have it unbound, then, you know, it's just free floating around. So let's take those out and let's get started. I am celebrating in bulk still. Uh, in my practice, I wait until the ancestors, guides, and guardians tell me that the uh, ritual of in bulk has been satisfied so this year they wanted me to observe it for about five days and it began on like a very very powerful day this year um in bulk did so uh, it was too powerful for me because <laughs> i'm still do i was still working with the energies of saga and sad and the new moon and just regular lunar new year and the switching over from metal buffalo into um blackwater tiger so I am now doing my in bulk ceremony. These are soaked in water for a long time <laughs> and from my own yard, fresh picked this morning, rosemary sprigs from my rosemary baby outside. That's really her plant name, it, it's rosemary berry <laughs> baby, but she is outside and she's about 10 years old this year. So she's a very good size. And then I am burning a goddess candle This was the kind here. It had a piece of twine and it had like a beautiful divine feminine goddess charm hanging from the twine. And then this is the candle lotus. Um, it says, with its roots in the mud, the lotus rises through water until it blossoms as a flower above its surface, um, always reaching towards the light. We are reminded of our own spiritual journey towards enlightenment and purity. And it seemed appropriate for this in bulk in particular also orange represents the sacral chakra and that is something that i'm going to have to depend on heavily in the year of 2022 both in my practice and also to in my personal life so um the rosemary i pick every year for in bulk um because it's such a purifying and activating plant and then also I get to do double duty because orange is also lucky for Lunar New Year. So just safety first, kids. You never want to uh, you never want to light sprigs with a candle unattended. I'm going to be um, doing this plan with me as a part of my seva. And so uh, it is considered a ritual for me and part of my in bulk uh, celebration of the ancestors guides and guardians and so that's why I have it burning with the sprigs now but if you plan on burning candles with sprigs always make sure your sprigs are soaked in water 
for at least an hour. This video does have timestamps for the moon phases of the week, daily transits and astrology symbol translations, color highlighting and elemental math, mini elemental summary box, and the Wee Moon Datebook weekly layout, plus the crystal of the week, which will be Tiger Eye Iron. It was been featured in previous Plan With Me's before, but especially for the Lunar New Year during the year of the Blackwater Tiger. Tiger's Eye is going to be a very, very dominant stone power for 2022 until February of 2023. And especially if you can get it with the iron, which is the hematite iron. That way it's kind of like a combination of deflection protection and then activation instead of using all the tiger's eye element for just protection as well. Like too much protection. So uh, red for root chakra and then yellow for solar chakra. And then I rounded it out with burning a sacral chakra calendar in orange. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do the moon phases of the week on the last two lines of every box. Seventh on the Monday, the moon is going to be in Taurus. Taurus, and then it won't move into another sign of Gemini until Wednesday. So this is going to be a moon in Taurus, moon in Taurus, and then moon in Gemini. And then on Wednesday the 9th, we have the Taurus moon moving into Gemini at 2.27 a.m. Moon in Gemini. Friday the 11th, we have the Gemini moon moving into the sign of Cancer at 3.27 in the afternoon Pacific Standard Time. On Saturday, we have the moon in Cancer and then on Sunday as well, the moon in Cancer. All right, so those are the moon phases of the week starting on February 7th through February 13th. Every week, the Wee Moon has been featuring a different language of the world, and it's rotating between four different languages right now. And this week is in Bengali, or the language that is spoken in Bangladesh. So in Bangladesh, they don't observe the Gregorian calendar, they have their own Bengali calendar, and that's where we get started today. So, uh, the month of February is actually the 10th month in the Bengali calendar, and it's actually a combination of February and March together, and that is pronounced Ma. So, um, just Ma. <laughs> and then, the days of the week, say it with me if you'd like. So, the S is pronounced as a SH or SH sound. And then there is another pronunciation. Uh, I think it's on the next page. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much the biggest one. Is S is pronounced as an SH. So Monday is Shombar. Shombar. Tuesday is Mongolbar. Tuesday is Mongolbar. Wednesday is Budbar. Budbar. And then Thursday is fun. It is Brihosh Potibar because the S is in SH. So Brihosh Potibar, like a brioche bread is how I remembered it. <laughs> and then Friday is Shukrobar, Shukrobar. Saturday is Shom Shonibar, Shonibar. And then Sunday is Robibar, Robibar. So those are the days of the week in Bengali, spoken in Bangladesh. Thank you, Wee Moon. So quick apology. I did not know that my camera stopped recording uh, during the astrology symbol translations. And so 
the part that survived was actually Friday to Saturday and Sunday. So, um, sorry. <laughs> this is what it translates to. And I you see here, I already started the elemental math part. But for those that like to plan along, uh, if you would like to pause your video and kind of just write down the notes, I apologize again for the camera cutting out. Zoom out a little bit. There we go. And then uh, that way you can kind of catch up and then go back to our regularly scheduled program on Friday or Shukrabar. We have the Gemini moon moving into the sign of Cancer at 327 Pacific Standard Time. Um, we start off the day though very very in the early evening um the sun trining the moon at 1222 a.m in the void of course then we have mercury conjunct Pluto at 6.04 in the morning. And then we have the moon moving into, the Gemini moon moving into Cancer. So we've got that already. Actually, could move that. It's okay, I'll leave it. <laughs> then on Saturday, we have on Shonibar, Got a couple of alignments here. Nothing too crazy, I hope. All related to the moon. So we have the moon trying Jupiter at 11.34 a.m. This is a Cancer moon trying uh, Jupiter, who is fire and earth. So this is a Cancer Moon trining with Jupiter actually being in the sign right now of Pisces, which is also to which rules Pisces. So um, Jupiter rules Pisces <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. Um, one of the planets that rules Pisces. Okay, so back to Shonabar. We have the Moon trining Uranus at 1.49 in the afternoon. Moon sextile, sorry, moon sextile Uranus. And then we have the moon opposition to Mars at 8.21 in the evening because we're doing with Cancer Moon opposite a fire Mars, obviously, so. That's so funny. Water moon with a fire Mars opposition at 2021. <laughs> like the year. <laughs> Wasn't it though? Okay, and then last one is going to be moon opposition Venus, uh, which is in air and earth, earth and air. And then on Sunday, Shonibar, it's very simple, which is such a relief. After all those crazy weekends of January, uh, we have the moon trining in Uranus. Sorry, my bad. We have the moon trining Neptune and then we have the moon opposition Pluto at 10.07 and the moon is still in Cancer. So these are the astrological symbol translations for the week of Monday, February 7th through Sunday, February 13th. And now we move on to the color highlighting slash elemental math portion, where we break down all of this information into the elemental energies for each day next week. Because of 
the moon being in Taurus as the major elemental influencing energy for the day, I'll say that this is going to be an earth and fire energy day. Which is very different than what we've been having uh, in the past couple of weeks. So I'm excited. Okay, then we have Aquarius, Sun, squaring off with the Taurus moon. And then the moon is still going to be in Taurus. So let's just go ahead and highlight all the Taurusness, and then um, do the one by one. So the Taurus moon. Then we have moon right there. Okay, so we have the Aquarius sun, that's air. Then we have Mars, which is fire, and then Uranus is air. Then Mercury is air, earth. And then Pluto is fire, water. Totally different. So going by, because there's all four elements, I mean, technically in this day. So energetically, I would say this is going to be an air, earth, fire day anyway. Air, earth, fire. Okay. Then on Monday, the moon is going to be moving into Gemini at 0227. So by the time this hits, this will be now a Gemini moon, which is in air. And then Jupiter is fire earth. So very simple, air, fire, earth. So basically the same energy as Tuesdays, but in a different prioritizing way. Then on Thursday, we have the moon in Gemini completely. So everything moon is going to be in air. And then Saturn is in earth. We have Neptune, which is water. And that's pretty spelled out. It's going to be air and earth because this happens later in the evening. It's not, a much, it's not as much time left in the day to really do many things unless you are doing things at this time, like around 1043 at night. So I go with what's relevant to the day or during the daytime. So air and earth. Then on Friday, we have the Gemini moon moving into Cancer at 327 in the afternoon. So everything after 327 moon related is gonna be water. But right now we have the Aquarius sun Shining the Gemini moon. And then we have Mercury conjunct Pluto. Mercury is air and earth. And then Pluto is fire water. So big air day right here on Friday. Air and... It's really not enough earth to anchor anything and it's not enough fire or water to do damage so I'm just gonna say air element day and circle it because that will be the predominant element of the day on Friday February 11th then we move on to moon and cancer day on Saturday and we have the Jupiter, which is fire earth usually, but it's in the sign of Pisces right now. So it is the priority of water. Uranus is air. Then we have Mars, which is fire. 
And then we have Venus, which is Earth and Air. Okay. So obviously, water. Watery Saturday. And I would say air. Because again, this happens at 8 o'clock at night and this happens at 9 o'clock at night. So um, I go with what's the priority for the daytime. So water, air. Could be a day of like emotional communication. Um, because, you know, for <laughs> Excuse me, Valentine's Day is coming up, so who knows? And then on Sunday, February 13th, the moon in Cancer is going to be trining with Neptune because Neptune is water. Lots of water this weekend. And then Pluto is that fire water. So we've got water and fire. And that's kind of like a small fire, it's a small F, but it's okay. That's kind of refreshing to see, considering the past weekends that we've all looked at in January. I know I keep going back to January, but y'all, I'm traumatized. <laughs> that Venus and Mercury retrograde, y'all, I'm going to be doing some serious meditation for at least a month trying to recover from all of that, those crazy elements. So this is the elemental math and color highlighting part of the weekly plan with me. Now I'm going to fill out the elemental mini summary box here and then we're going to move into translating it into the Wee Moon layout. Okay, so this is the mini summary box for the week. For those that just want to do like a quick glance uh, for themselves, I like to go by the priorities. So this is just a tool that I use to make sure that if there's days that are missing the element that I need to focus on. Uh, for example, I had been working on earth element last year in the year of the metal buffalo. But now that we're in the year of the water tiger, I am kind of like getting comfortable with using fire element again and of course water element. Uh, not to be too emotional and then also to not to be too overbearing because I could be that. <laughs> not too bossy. And then learning how to balance out all this air energy which we're still in the shadow of Mercury retrograde and so I still have to be really cautious. Of things happening such as my camera stopping recording <laughs> so that is the mini summary box and now we're going to move into translating all of these into the new moon date book so i forgot that i have to actually take this page out from the sheet protector <laughs> because it's on back uh, it's behind this page here from last week so i take that out i'm really glad i didn't laminate <laughs> And then um, we're going to move these elements of the day and I'm going to put them right there. So these are the elemental energies in the weekly 
layout of the Wee Moon Datebook. On Monday, Shombar, we have Earth and Fire. On Tuesday, we have Air, Earth and Fire. On Wednesday, Budbar, we have Air, Fire, Earth. Sorry, Tuesday was Mongolbar. I can't forget that one. And then on Thursday, we have Bihoshpoti Bar. We have Air and Earth. Friday, Shukra Bar. We have Air, just straight up Air. <laughs> so I know I'll be definitely balancing myself out on this day uh, because I'm pretty sure it's going to bring up a lot of traumatizing Mercury retrograde crap shadow stuff. So yeah, I would say like the big caution day would maybe be uh, Friday, February 11th, just because there's not a lot of other elemental energies there. So definitely uh, do the balancing that you need to do. On Saturday, Shonibar, we have water and air, which is going to be a relief after this day. And then on Robibar, Sunday the 13th, we have water and fire. And now we're going to move into the crystal of the week. This week's crystal of the week is going to be a favorite of mine. This is Tiger Eye Iron. This is a combination of red and gold and tiger's eye. Um, if you're fancy, red tiger's eye is called cat's eye. And then we have yellow for the tiger's eye. And then blue, which is a little bit more on the rarer side, is called hawk's eye. So we have cat and tiger eye with hematite iron. That's the beautiful like grayish sheen, metallic sheen on this. Hematite iron helps to deflect negative energies and also to any unwanted lower frequencies and lower vibrations. And then the red or cat's eye represents the root chakra for the new beginnings that we are all laying down for the lunar new year with the new energies of 2022 legit. Um, because this is following the lunar calendar and not the Gregorian calendar and um, the new moon as well. Any seeds that we have planted or we are trying to manifest as of the new moon of last week. And then we have the yellow golden tiger's eye to give us more chi in our solar chakras because our solar chakras are our batteries for our bodies. And uh, because of everybody coming out of this Venus and Mercury retrograde together, um, on top of everything, it's like extra, extra, extra drained. <laughs> if you haven't already found a good routine of self-care or you found one, but you haven't been practicing it. So it is very imperative that we start to really take into consideration how we are maintaining our spiritual health and our energy field hygiene. If you need a cleansing, cleanse yourself. You don't have to go to anybody else. Just cleanse yourself. Um, if you've been maybe even lagging on going to sweat, uh, sweat lodge in a while, or if you um, are from the ancestry that does sauna as well. I have some uh, Norwegian and some Scandinavian friends that use that also as their version of sweat lodge. Y'all need to book it <laughs> and just do it for yourself because this is a time of the year where we can officially wash off all of the older energies of the last year and the holidays and these like past holidays of um, Lunar New Year celebrations, like start fresh, start new. And you can do it in a balanced way with your root chakra, with your solar chakra, and then overall all chakras of the hematite iron protection and grounding and deflection. So now I'm going to put it all back together again. This is the current week that uh, of the time of this filming. I didn't have much to journal, uh, but I might later, <laughs> or I might add it to the journaling on the back of here. Just some thoughts about the Lunar New Year and then the New Moon and then Imbolc. I might actually write more stuff about Imbolc on this one and then more stuff about Sagansar and Lunar New Year on this one. Um, I just haven't had time to, but I know what I want to write about, so that's a plus. <laughs> so that's going to go here. And then this is going to go here as well. And this. All right, so it'll look like this. And then this. Uh, this is a really nice poem. If there was ever a poem that would describe what we were all going through 
after the Venus and Mercury retrogrades ending, it would be this one. So thank you, We Moon, for choosing a really great piece. Um, this piece of art is called Destination Now by Autumn Sky in 2009. And this piece of poetry is an excerpt uh, by Elise Stewart from 2018. I'm going to read it out loud and I highly recommend that when these pieces of poetry come up and these writings come up, read it out loud for yourself because if you're not into meditation or you're not into ritual but you definitely know you want to take better responsibility for your energy field, reading this kind of poetry out loud which might be outside of what we usually read or our style or whatever, it's really healing because when it all comes down to it, the Wee Moon date book is very powerful divine feminine and all divine feminines of the world are all different. So I'm going to read it out loud because I like it. <laughs> in between time or void, of course, waking up in that moment, coming from the dream world, the real world to this one before rolling over before feet touch the floor, the feel of other places still swimming around me, I am in between time. I'm sometimes lost, sometimes found, leaping from one world to another, carrying in my rucksack more secrets in the hidden pouch inside, waiting for the right moment to empty them onto the page. Y'all, isn't this like the straight up truth right now? I have been having some crazy dreams and I know it's because the energies were switching over from metal buffalo into water tiger and black water tiger at that. Black just means, I mean, it's beneficial for business, but also too, it's all the colors of the rainbow into one. And so it's like a lot. <laughs> it's like universe galactic. Um, so I really love this line right here i'll wake up from these dreams y'all and it'll literally be like this the feel of other places still swimming around me i am in between time y'all you're also in between realms <laughs> when that happens so what i like to suggest to people is keep a tiny itty bitty little notebook like if you're a happy planner you know you have those little micro planners and you're not using them for anything else use them as a dream journal and by dream journal i don't mean like diary pages and pages and pages and pages about descriptions like if you have time for that that's awesome but key words that you can record in that little mini notebook or that mini micro planner that will help trigger the memory of what that astral realm experience was so that later on you can look back to it and then maybe journal further and what I always say too is write the day that you're waking up in and the date because you can always refer back to that later based on, um, you know, the Espad or the Sabbat or the moon phase of the day. It can be a, an invaluable resource. I'm still consulting dream journals from like five years ago. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what? <laughs> it's totally relevant now. Or wow, I really needed to remember that memory of that lesson that I learned on the astral realm um, now in the year 2022. So definitely enjoy the beautiful poetry and the beautiful art that Wee Moon has provided for us in the date book because it's like I mean even the art sometimes isn't anything that I resonate with but that it's there and that we have the option and the choice to read it or enjoy it or study it it's really really great so as an added bonus I wanted to show you how you can use the elemental energy information in your weekly layout spread. So this is my catch-all. No, it is not updated yet for February. <laughs> um, and I'm going to be doing it hopefully this weekend. Uh, but wanted to show, I'm going to be writing in my elemental energies for the week right here on this first line. So what I use is a modified teacher's planner. Um, they usually look like this. Uh, with the days of the week, five days of the week, so just Monday through Friday, no Saturday or Sunday in this kind of column here. And then you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven full rows of lines. And I need lines. I used to use a vertical line planner that had a big blank box of no lines on the top and then just a limited number of lines on the bottom. And they were sectioned off in the three uh, parts. But I've noticed that I am a lot more productive when they're in these smaller boxes broken into five and per day. And also I got a little crafty 
and I used one of the unused pages of this in uh, on this column here because I needed to cover up the Monday through Friday but also I wanted to try to start my Monday all the far right uh, left side similar to a moxie life planner because I do not have a moxie life in my budget right now but I was intrigued to see how it starts on a Monday here and then leaves the note column on the far right side and I think for me that would be a lot more beneficial because I'm right-handed and I it's nice to have a place to scribble scrabble notes just right here on the right column and also the bulk of my busy week schedule and work schedule is Monday through Thursday um, more than it is through like Thursday and Friday the way that traditionally is in a vertical layout so it's been working out for me so far I'm having a lot of fun with using up the washi tape that I have this is a special Lunar New Year washi tape uh, from Simply Gilded that was offered last year and then um, coordinating uh, red and gold from also Simply Gilded Stardust so it's gonna be my spread for my lucky cats and my um, kind of like more common Lunar New Year. So it's going to be a lot of Hello Kitty and a lot of similar to the little decoration that I put in my plan with me last week. Um, but I'm going to write it in right now so that you can see what it looks like. So this is just a tiny little example of taking the elemental energies of the week and the day and integrating it into your daily catch-all planner just so that you know ahead of the time for the week like what days are you going to have to really balance out for yourself and um, like uh, especially if you have special occasions, special events, meetings, appointments, you can see how you have to en elementally and energetically prepare for that day ahead of time because it's already tracked out. So um, this is also to a really big reason why I changed my filming days and I'm able to now uh, have this out hopefully again by Sunday or at the very latest on Mondays. So thank you so, so much for joining me today for this weekly plan with me. May we all aspire to find energetic balance and connection to our own loving spirit and inner brightness today. Until next time, friends and paws, everyone take care and have a great week. Bye-bye.